Is the OC GoStream Duet the perfect device to use for filming small conferences and events? In this video, I'm gonna walk you through exactly step-by-step -step how to set it up for this kind of use. Hi, I'm Aaron Parecki. Now, before we get started setting up the GoStream, I first wanna actually go through an overview of the type of event I'm talking about and show you a diagram of the layout here. So this is a pretty typical small event. We've got some seating where people are gonna be sitting watching a presenter at the front of the room. The presenter at the front of the room has a laptop and a microphone, and there's a projector. So the projector will be sitting somewhere, maybe on a table at front. There's gonna be a PA for the room so that people can hear in the room, but also so that we make sure people actually use the microphone. And the video booth might be over to the side like this. I wanted to lay this out just so that you have an idea of the kind of environment I'm talking about working within. This is a pretty minimal setup for larger events. You might want more cameras or cameras that are farther away or closer, maybe more audio, maybe more microphones. But this is a pretty typical setup for like a classroom or, or a small conference venue. If we start looking at the way that these devices are gonna get connected to the video booth, we can start drawing little lines between them. So we've got, of course, we want one camera that's gonna be a close up of the person presenting. We also probably want a second camera as a wide shot of the room. This is not strictly necessary, but I do like having a second camera there for the times where you need to adjust the main camera or in case they move away from the podium, just so you have something to cut back to as a safety shot. Of course, we also need to bring in the slides from the presenter's laptop. Now this is something that's actually kind of hard to deal with in most cases, and I'll mention how I'm gonna handle this for this particular setup. We also, of course, need audio from the presenter's microphone. This could be a microphone that's installed on the podium, but for this kind of thing, I'm actually gonna use a handheld microphone just so that the person can walk around if they want, or for between presenters, it's easier to hand off a microphone to the MC or the host of the event. Now let's talk about outputs. I need to be able to feed the projector from the video booth. Now I actually like doing it this way because what it means is that I can choose what's on that projector and it's not only just a copy of the laptop at the front of the room. So when the person's done with their presentation and they're ready to hand off to the next person, they're gonna yank the HDMI cord out of their laptop. Now this would mean that the projector would start flickering or would show no signal and I don't like the way that looks in the room. So what I would rather do is be able to put up a placeholder slide like a break screen or even just a logo as soon as they're done with their presentation. That way when they unplug their laptop, there's no flickering. It's also gonna look nicer on the stream when I am ultimately streaming and recording this. So this is the reason that I want to have the laptop go all the way to the video booth first and then feed the projector from the video booth. That way I can control what's on the projector. And lastly, I'm going to also need to feed audio to the room. This is again for two reasons. One, because people in the back may not be able to hear the person if they're speaking very softly, but also because as a presenter, unless you actually get feedback that you your microphone is working, you're likely to just forget about it and then the remote people won't be able to hear you at all. Okay, so that's a diagram of the, how the room is set up. Let's now go into a little bit of how I want the shots to be set up. So first of all, I'm gonna want a shot that is a close up of the presenter, probably actually cropped in more than this diagram shows, but basically a shot that has only the presenter in there and really nothing else. Secondly, we want a full screen capture of the presenter's laptop, both to put on the stream and to put on the projector. The third shot I want is a split screen. And this is where it starts to get a little bit tricky. I want to be able to put the camera of the presenter side by side next to their computer screen. And all of that goes on top of a colorful background. I'll use some sort of branding that matches the conference venue's branding. And that's what we're gonna see in the stream. So those are the three main angles that I wanna put on the stream. I'm gonna also probably want some sort of logo, like, like a lo static logo, or maybe also a break screen. For example, I could have an iPad generating an animation in Keynote that's just got a break screen or maybe it's looping through slides of all the sponsors. And this way I can put that on the stream between sessions and I can also put it in the projector. So now let's talk about what I wanna feed the projector with. So in the projector in the room, I'm gonna to wanna to show basically two things. One is a complete full screen version of whatever is on the laptop from the presenter. And the second is my break screen. This will be between sessions when there's no laptop connected or when they're trying to fiddle with their video settings. So I'm gonna be able to wanna to switch between these two on the projector very quickly. So if we look at all the connections in and out of whatever switcher we're gonna be using, we basically need four video inputs, some sort of audio input, and then two outputs, one for the projector and one so that I can see what's going on, a multi-view. These don't need to be HDMI outputs. These just need to be, we're gonna to need to record the, the whole meeting locally to a drive of some sort, SD card, hard drive. 
And we also need a USB output into Zoom. And this is for the scenario where you're running like a Zoom webinar, where there's no remote people in Zoom who are going to join the meeting in person, but you do want to be able to broadcast over Zoom. This would also work just as well broadcasting to any other video conferencing platform that supports a webcam input. The other way that this typically works with events is this is actually a streaming output from the encoder to something like YouTube. In my case, for the type of events I'm talking about here, I'm actually going to be using a Zoom webinar, which means I'm going to need a USB output from the switcher into a laptop at the video booth to run this event. And of course, I need some sort of audio output from the switcher or at least from the microphone into the PA in the room. So now that we know the kind of inputs and outputs that we're looking for, we can start to take a look at whether different video switcher models are going to actually help us with this or not. First, we'll take a look at the Yolobox models, the Yolobox Mini through the Ultra and the Majewell Director Mini. The main difference between all the different Yolobox models is how many HDMI inputs they have. The Yolobox Ultra also has this special vertical mode, but we don't care about that right now. So the main difference between the Mini, the Pro and the Ultra is the number of HDMI inputs. Now, unfortunately, this device isn't really going to help us with this at all because it doesn't have the option that we need in order to feed the projector. If we look at the tech specs for this and look at the inputs and outputs, we do have enough video inputs for this. And actually we would be able to use maybe a uh, PDF or an SD card video for one of these internally, but the output options don't work. There's only one HDMI out and it can only be either a copy of the screen or the program output. And in order to feed the projector, I need to be able to pass through one of the inputs directly to that that is not necessarily what's on the stream. This limitation sadly also applies to the Majorwell Director Mini. The Director Mini only has two HDMI inputs, but it does have some webcam inputs and we could probably make things work with that otherwise. But again, the HDMI out is only either a copy of the screen for multi-view or the full program output. So that takes us to some of the Blackmagic products. There's a huge range of ATEM switchers that Blackmagic makes. I do want to focus on the, the lower end models just for the sake of price. Now, the ATEM Television Studio line, which starts at $3,000, is an absolutely capable switcher for this and does have enough inputs and outputs to do all of this that I need and more, but I don't want to carry a device that big to an event like this. And it's also $3,000 and I would really rather spend a lot less. The rack mount versions are also a great option. They do have enough inputs and outputs, although weirdly the Constellation 4K doesn't have the super source feature, which is the key feature that we need in order to do that side-by-side -side layout, which basically means for the Constellation series, we're starting at at least $1,700, which is not terrible, but it is also a rack mount switcher. And I'm again, trying to make this a little bit more portable because this is not a huge event. So that takes us to the A10 minis. Now, unfortunately, the A10 mini series, the Pro and the Pro ISO, these are right out the window off the gate. And that's again, because they only have one HDMI out. So if I'm using the HDMI for multi-view, I can't feed a projector. If we look at the SDI models, there are two SDI outputs on these. So this is a contender. However, again, the base model, the four input model doesn't have super source. So we again, can't do the side-by-side -side layout. So really for the A10 mini line, that leaves us with the A10 mini extreme models, either the HDMI or SDI. I'm gonna focus on the HDMI version because the SDI version is all SDI and I know I'm gonna have more HDMI sources than SDI for this. Plus it's a little bit cheaper. This does have the two HDMI outputs, which is exactly what I need for this. I can use one as the multi-view and one to feed the projector. These HDMI outs are assignable so that you can make them either multi-view View, program or any of the eight inputs. So this device would work. The only downside to this is that there's really no audio output options available for this for powering speakers. So I'm going to assume that I'm going to run all the audio for the room in a separate mixer, which is fine. The Extreme does have the super source feature, which lets me do the side by side layout, which is actually like what you're seeing right now. So the Extreme would work, but the downside is really that it's just actually way overkill for this. I actually don't need eight inputs. I barely need four. And really I don't need most of the features of this device. Plus it's not exactly small. It's a decent size, but it's actually a lot bigger than a lot of laptop sleeves and backpacks. So it means carrying it around is just a little bit more of a project. So this brings me to the OC GoStream, in particular the GoStream Duet. There's two models of ghost streams. One has four HDMI inputs and the other has four HDMI and four SDI ports. And this is actually a really cool feature, which we're going to take advantage of for this kind of setup. It's also only $400 for the version with SDI ports, which is extremely affordable, especially compared to the ATEM Mini Extreme, which was 1300. So let's take a look at the ghost stream and look at the inputs and outputs and how we can use them to solve this problem. Again, remember we're looking for a way to bring in two HDMI cameras, an iPad or a laptop for the break screen, and then the presenter's laptop, which is actually gonna be farther away, probably farther than HDMI signals can go in an HDMI cable. So I'm actually gonna add a 
decimator converter in between, which converts it to SDI for a longer cable run, which means that I probably actually want one SDI input here. Otherwise I need to bring a converter. And I do need two outputs, two HDMI outputs at the very least, and I need to be able to record and have a webcam out. So this is the GoStream Duet. I've got these four SDI ports along the side and then the four HDMIs on the back. So I've got the main camera of the presenter here. I've got maybe a wide angle of the room. I've got the break screen, which is actually connected to an iPad sitting over here. This is just running a keynote file on a loop, which is just saying break, but I could add sponsored logos and things. And then over here, I've got my computer screen, which it would be like the presenter's laptop brought in. The GoStream also has the ability to save still images in the media pool so I can put like a conference logo or a background for the super source. And importantly, it does have the super source feature, which is what lets me do this side by side layout of my main camera plus the laptop from the presenter. So let's take a look at what this actually looks like in a wiring diagram so I can show you how everything's connected to the GoStream. This is actually the GoStream Duet. So even though there's four inputs showing on the top here, it does have eight input ports. However, you can't actually use eight at, a, at the same time. Basically, there's a setting that lets you choose each of the four video channels, whether you want it to be SDI or HDMI. So for this, I've got two HDMI cameras, although I could easily run one of these cameras in over SDI if I wanted to. I have my iPad, which is plugged in over HDMI because it'll be sitting on my desk next to me here. And then up here, I've got the presenter plugging in their laptop into the decimator, which would be at the podium, and then a long SDI cable that runs into the GoStream for their slides. The two HDMI outs, one is gonna feed the projector, one is gonna feed a monitor on my desk here. And it has a USB output, which I can bring into the computer that'll be running Zoom. So this is the video connection diagram. Now, again, there's no audio, there's no real audio out option in the GoStream that's gonna let us run a powered speaker. So I'm actually gonna treat audio totally separately from this and have a dedicated audio mixer. And that audio mixer will take a microphone from the presenter, run it through the audio board, output to a speaker, and then send a copy of that audio into the mic jack here in the GoStream. That is a simple enough audio chain that it's really any audio mixer will work for that. So I'm not gonna bother putting this in the diagram. Okay, so now it's time to talk about configuring the OC GoStream for this kind of setup. Okay, so we've got our four sources plugged in. And the first thing I need to show you is actually how to change whether these are HDMI or SDI inputs. It's actually very possible that your rear camera or maybe your front camera might actually be too far away in order for an HDMI cable. So you may want to bring one of those in over SDI as well. So I'm going to go tap on the menu here and we'll see this little menu pop up. I'll switch over to this full screen so you can see it up close. So I can use a little scroll wheel on this to scroll through the options here. I'm going to go all the way down to settings and we're going to go down until we get to the source selection. And this is what lets us choose which of the four inputs are HDMI or SDI. For me, I've got this one set to SDI. You can, you can just change it like this. You can change this between SDI or HDMI auto or a particular HDMI format, which I don't usually use. This will change it into SDI. Now, one other note about the SDI option in the duet is that this is actually a SDI priority, which means if it doesn't detect an SDI signal, it'll actually fall back to the HDMI. So you can almost use it as another input that is a live switch input, but there is a bit of a flicker when it does that auto switch over. Let me show you what I mean by doing this on input three. I'll change input three to SDI and that's this break screen. Now I do have the iPad that's on the desk here plugged in over HDMI into input three. But if I take the SDI cable that my computer screen is in and then I pull that out and I'll plug it into input three, as soon as it detects a signal, it's gonna switch over to the computer. But did you see how there was a bit of a flicker? I'll give you an example and I'll put it up on the projector behind me and you'll see why this isn't necessarily best for running this in a room. If I unplug it, it's gonna detect that the signal has died and it's gonna do a little bit of a flicker, but then flip back over to HDMI. So you can almost use it as an auto switch over, but I think it's just a little bit too messy and I don't quite like that flicker. Instead, it's much cleaner to actually use it as a separate input. And then I can switch the TV behind me into either the break screen or the presenter slides. So back to the menu here, you can just change whether you want each input to use the SDI input or not. In fact, if you just set them all to SDI, it means that if you don't plug in anything in SDI, it'll just use the HDMI. So that might be a totally fine default for you to just leave this in. Now I have the option of bringing any of my cameras in over SDI in case I need them to be farther away than the HDMI cable supports. While we're here, let me just set up the audio really quick. So the audio settings are these little buttons over here. And basically the way it works is you press on the input source that you wanna configure. In my case, here's input one. And then this shows you whether it's on or off. So I'm gonna turn off the audio from HDMI and I'm gonna go make sure that the other HDMI sources are also off. And then uh, also the aux, and that's like a video playback or a wireless camera. 
and I'm gonna make sure that the audio for the mic one is turned on. And that'll let me plug in an audio mixer into mic one. So now I've got the four inputs and I'm ready to just be able to use these buttons up at the top to switch what's in the program, which is going to be sent to Zoom as well as what's recorded. Now I wanna talk about how to feed the projector. I did mention there's a second HDMI output. So let's go back into the settings menu and I can show you how that works. So back in the menu here, we'll go down to the setting and then we'll scroll down to output source. This is where you can change what is going out the two HDMI ports. So here for the HDMI 2, this is set to multi-view and this is so that I can see it on this monitor in front of me. HDMI 1 is now set to preview. So you can change this to program or aux or any of the four inputs directly. If you did know, for example, that you only ever wanted to feed the projector from whatever is in your input three, you can just fix it there, right? But I'm actually using this in a slightly unusual way by setting this to preview. By setting this to preview, whatever's in that preview window, which is over there, that's what's gonna be sent out the HDMI port. And that's what's actually going to the screen behind me. This isn't exactly how I want this to work, but the reason I did this is because it's a little bit easier to change what's on that screen by using these physical buttons rather than going into this menu. I will talk about companion in a minute, which is how I can actually configure this all from a stream deck, but bear with me for a minute. Notice that the options in this list are HDMI 1, 2, 3, 4, aux, program, preview, multi-view. I don't have any option of sending what's in the still players, which means if I wanted to put a logo behind me, I would have to actually have that in one of the HDMI inputs. Or it could be a video clip that I've saved and I'm using in the aux input. But weirdly, I don't have the option of routing the still graphics to the HDMI output, but I do have the option of routing the preview to the HDMI output. So with that in place, now what it lets me do, I can actually use the physical preview buttons along the bottom to change what's on the projector behind me. So right now I've got it showing the still logo, but I could instead change it to the screen of the presenter. And I can also change it to my break screen. And this is a quick way to use physical buttons to change what's on the projector. It does mean when I'm using this way, I can't do any transitions. Because if I do any transitions with the, the fader bar or if I use cut or auto, then it's gonna totally mess up what's on the projector because that, that's the preview app. If I wanted to, for example, change between the wide angle and the presenter using a transition, sure, it works fine in program, but now the projector is all messed up. So I'm gonna go back and show just a logo on the projector behind me. But I actually think this is fine because I don't use crossfades and these fancy transitions for the most part anyway. I think hard cuts are actually a lot nicer for most things and you really don't need the crossfades or fancy transitions for the most of the time. So this little slight compromise of using the preview buttons to actually feed the projector, I think it'll work fine for my use case. The last thing we need to do in here before we can really get this running is configure that side-by-side -side layout. So back in the menu, there is a feature in the GoStream called SuperSource. This is what lets us do this kind of side-by-side -side layout. So here, I'll make sure it's enabled, and then we will just put it in the program field so we can show you what it looks like here. In Source, this is where you choose what you want in the two boxes. So in Source 1, I've got Input 1, so I can change you know, which of the inputs goes into that box. So I want that to be the main camera, that makes sense. Source 2, this will be the presenter slides. I could make it be the iPad that's next to me, but because this is you know, for the presenter presenting their own slides, I'm gonna fix that at input four. I get to choose what goes in the background as well. I have it set to still player one. It could also be the other still player two. It could actually be any of the inputs. So if I did wanna use like an animated background that I'm running off of an iPad, I could also do it that way as well. It's kind of a fun effect, but for this, because I'm actually gonna be using this as a break screen, I wanna just have a still graphic for the background. So I'll set that to still player one. If I go back and look at the uh, control section, this is where you choose the different layouts of SuperSource. Now the SuperSource feature in the GoStream is definitely more limited compared to the SuperSource in the A10 Mini Extreme. In the A10 Mini Extreme, you basically get a background and get four windows that you can place and crop on top. In the GoStream, it is only two windows on top and you don't get complete custom control over it. There's really just a couple of different layouts to snap to. It does mean that it's a lot easier to configure though. So for the style here, I can go and show you the different options. We've got crop zoom out, we have zoom out and crop, which is where it's in source one is full screen and the second one is cropped. And we've got crop for both. And we also have zoom out on both. So if you did need to show the full window of whatever is in input one, you can show them in the same size. But I really like this option where it crops the person, the person's main camera that you got a close up shot of, and then has the full screen for their slides. If you did want to adjust your background and maybe have text along the bottom or something, you can also choose where this sits vertically. You can push it all the way to the top, you can push it all the way to the bottom. 
I just have it set to the middle because my background is symmetrical. For a conference, I might actually want to scoot it up a little bit and then leave some room down at the bottom to put conference branding, maybe a little ticker showing the name of the event or the date or something like that. So I'll set mine back to 50% so that it's centered. I'm not using the mask features here, but you do have the option of cropping in on either of the two video sources. So for example, I can turn this on and then we can see we can actually crop the, the left and right and top and bottom of the camera or the slides. I don't need that because I'd have my myself taking up the, the full vertical space here. I'm also not gonna use the borders, but you could turn on borders around either of the cameras. I don't really think it's necessary for this layout. Maybe if my background wasn't colorful, that might help, but I'm gonna leave these off as well. So once this is created, this is basically another camera angle that you can switch to. So now if I look at my program buttons, I can go between the full screen of the presenter, the wide angle of the room, I can show their slides full screen on the stream, and then I can go and press the super source button to show the side-by-side -side layout. If I want to, for some reason, I could also put the super source on the projector, but I think that's weird because then in the room, they're gonna see the, their own video, which isn't great for a small room. If it was a large room, that might be helpful because then if it's on a really large TV and the person's really far away from the stage, that might be helpful. But for this, I don't think it's necessary. So I'll leave the projector showing their slides or the break screen, and I'll just do the camera cuts to the stream and recording this way. When it's time for a break, I can go and press still two and show the just the conference logo on the screen in the stream. That's what's gonna show on Zoom, and that's what's recorded. And that way we can shuffle things around in the room when we need to and not have all that visible to the remote people. So, so far I've done everything you've seen by only using the buttons on the GoStream. This is actually one of the really cool features of the GoStream is that everything you need to do is possible to do just by using the physical buttons. There's this menu system that you can see on the screen and you don't need an external device to control it. However, I actually really do like using an external device just because it lets me make more custom layouts with only the buttons that I actually need. And that is what this Stream Deck is for that's next to me. So let's go into my computer and I'll show you how to configure the Stream Deck to support the Go Stream. So first of all, what is a Stream Deck? A Stream Deck is a little controller that has these buttons and screens behind them, and you can use it with software on your computer to control different apps on your computer, but there's third-party software for it called Companion, which will actually take over the buttons on the Stream Deck and let you control things that are not on your computer. And that's what I like to use it for. I've got other videos about the Stream Deck and Companion on my channel, so I'll link to those down below as well. Now, Companion by default supports a whole range of devices. However, the OC GoStream is not yet in the production version of the software. So you will have to install that module manually. I'll leave a link down below to where you can download that code and you have to install it in your companion manually. That's more than I wanna get into in this video for now. So I'm gonna just jump ahead to configuring the buttons once that's already installed. So this is what the companion software looks like. You get a little preview of the Stream Deck and you can create buttons that can do different actions. I've already got mine pretty well set up for what I need. It's maybe doing a little bit more, so I might delete some of these, but let's go through these buttons and I'll show you how they work. When you install modules, there are usually presets for the modules and those will be common actions that you might want to configure and it saves you some time setting them up. So I can see that I've got the GoStream connected here and it's showing up as a preset. And if I click on that, I can see that there's all these different actions. So for example, if I wanna make buttons to change what's on the program, I can click the program section and then these are just pre-configured buttons that are really easy to, to drag in. So I can just drag this into input one, drag this into input two, you can see something changed about it because it, the preset isn't exactly how I want it to work. So if it isn't quite doing what you want, you go and click on it and then you can change what it does. So that when you press it, this will do this action in the go stream. In this case, it's changing the program to input one. That's fine. Feedback is a section that will let you change the color that appears based on the state of the device. So when input one is in program, the background color is green and the text color is white. Now I find this really hard to see. You can't really see it even on the screen here. So I'm actually gonna change the text to black. And I don't like green for program. I actually prefer it to be red. So I'm gonna change the background to red. Now ironically, the red background actually looks better with white text, so I'm gonna change that back over here. You can add multiple feedbacks and that's actually how I've got these other buttons configured. So let me go show you how that works. The feedback here is if input four is in preview, then the background will be green and the text will be black. And if the input four is in program, then it'll actually be a red background with white text. And this way I've actually got two states. So you can see that input four is in preview, so it's green. That's because that's what's showing on the projector behind me. If I bring that into the program stream, 
then the button turns red. So I actually like this kind of dual state. So I'm gonna go and copy that to the other buttons. You can also copy buttons by just clicking on the one you want to copy from, copy to, and now I can change this to input two, change that to input two, go into here and change these into input two as well. Then we'll do the same thing. We'll copy and paste that because I've already got this one configured with the two feedback states. And then we'll change the input sources here. Now I've got buttons for the four different cameras. I might want to actually name these just because input one isn't very descriptive. So I could say close up this will be called wide. This will be the break screen and input four is going to be the uh, uh, slides. I don't think I'm gonna be using aux for this. The aux is actually a fifth video channel you can use. You can either have it be playing back videos from an SD card. It can be an NDI source. So I could use a wireless camera, for example, or it could actually be a USB camera that's plugged in. I think for my scenario, I'm gonna end up with two HDMI cameras or HDMI and SDI, and I don't need a USB webcam. So I probably don't even need a button for the aux. So what I'm gonna actually do is move this super source button on top of it, because I will be using the super source layout all the time. And this is where, again, we have this two state button and it'll change uh, the input to super source. For some reason in the plugin, the super source source is labeled black. I don't know why that happened, but if you do configure it with black, that actually means super source. So if I press the button on the stream deck, then it's going to put that in the program, or I could put it in the preview and, and show you what it looks like on the screen back there. So you can see it's super source layout and it's the button's green because it's in preview, which is the projector. I do have buttons for still one and still two. I'm probably gonna, I should actually get rid of the still one because still one is just that uh, background for the super source, which I don't ever need to show in the projector or in the program. But I do want still two, which is gonna be the conference logo. So I'll just move that button on top of it. So now I've got my top row of buttons, which is what's uh, on the stream. So when I press any of the buttons on the stream deck, it'll change what's going onto the stream. Now I probably want a separate row of buttons to change what's on the projector. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete these buttons because I'm not actually using the aux. These buttons were configured to change what the aux does between USB or SD card, but I'm not gonna use the aux for the show, so I'm gonna delete these. So I do want buttons that'll change what goes to the projector. So this button, you can see that there's a setting. It's gonna change the setting and it's gonna change the HDMI one output to the preview. Now, again, for some reason, this is, I think still in beta. So there, there's a option missing and I can't control what the HDMI two has, but that's okay because HDMI two is just my multi-view and I never wanna change that. So I use HDMI one for feeding the projector. So HDMI one will be set to preview with this button. I could make buttons that change the HDMI output to different inputs directly. And that is different than what I mentioned before of using the preview bus for it. So I think actually what I wanna do is I don't need to press this button very often because that's like configuration. And I'm just gonna delete these and we're gonna create new buttons that are going to select what's on the preview bus. So I can use the presets for this. I can go into the go stream and then go into the preview section. And what do I wanna show on the projector? Well, really just the break screen. I'll put it under that button. I want the slides. And then I probably want uh, still two, which is the conference logo. So let's go and configure the feedback here. I want the feedback. I want that text to be black because the contrast is better. I do like the green for preview. That makes sense. So we'll just go ahead and change this text to black as well. So now I've got the top row of buttons to change the program and I've got the second row of buttons, which is gonna change what's on the projector. So now, so now as you watch the projector behind me, I can press input three and that's gonna change that to the break screen. I can press input four and that'll change it to the computer and I can show the conference logo there. I should probably also rename these buttons so that they actually say break and slides. And I'll actually name this break projector. We called projector slides and this will be projector logo. I should change that to logo as well. Great. I'm just gonna delete this button down here cause I don't need it. And I'm gonna delete the play button. These buttons were set up to toggle the streaming of uh, each of the three encoders. I'm not gonna actually be streaming this conference using the streaming encoder because I'm actually going to be doing it through Zoom. So I don't need these buttons. However, I definitely want a record button. So let's move this somewhere Actually, maybe the bottom corner is fine for that. The record button, this will toggle the recording status on the go stream. So if I press this, it turns red and then it'll start counting up. I don't really like how it's wrapping the text there. So let's make the font smaller and maybe it'll fit on one line. There we go. So this means it's now recording to the internal SD card. I can also see on the go stream itself, the record light is now red 
And if I go and toggle the button on the Stream Deck, you can see that it'll stop recording as well. So I like having this kind of a clean layout for, for running an event because I don't have buttons that'll do incorrect things. The only buttons on here are gonna be things that I'm actually going to be using during the event. So I got my top row of buttons for program. I've got my projector control and start and stop recording. Now that I'm thinking about it, I may actually want these buttons to be down on the bottom just so that they're easier to reach from the desk. Let's go ahead and do that really quick. I can just go ahead and do this move down here, move all of these, and I'm gonna move these to the second row and I'll move the record button up to the top, right? So I don't accidentally press it. Great, so that's my Stream Deck setup. This is now able to control what's going on on the, the Go Stream. I can change what's in the program, I can toggle recording, and I can even control what's on the projector behind me. Again, this is an optional step because I can actually do the same things with the physical buttons. And because I'm using the preview bus to control the projector, I can actually do the same thing of controlling the projector from physical buttons as well. It's just a little bit easier to make mistakes when there's buttons that I don't ever wanna press. Like I never wanna put the camera on the projector, so I'm never gonna press that button. And that's why on the Stream Deck, I don't even have that button. I only have the buttons that I'm going to use. So with that, the GoStream is ready to use for an on-site event. I can now pack this up in a bag, plug in my cameras when I get there, turn it on, and I'm ready to go. I'll of course make conference branding for the event before I leave and put it onto the SD card and load it into the media players. But other than that, this thing is ready to go. I hope this video has been helpful and given you some ideas of how you can use the GoStream in your own productions. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.